guys have been paying attention to the short videos we've been posting on our social media platforms, you will know that we have a brand new alligator snapping turtle. He's a very large male, similar to the beloved alligator snapping turtle we used to have, Chum, who we sadly lost this past summer. So, we're extremely excited to have this guy, but there are some challenges. The animal is very emaciated, way too thin. He does have a great appetite, but our veterinarian suspects that there could either be a blockage or parasites going on. He has not passed anything yet. So today, we're taking him over to our veterinarian for an x-ray to see what we see inside. Come join. ask us how can we tell he's so thin there are more obvious ways by looking at a turtle's tail and being able to see the vertebrae sticking out uh, and also looking at the legs you know the uh, atrophy and the muscles and how thin they can look but a good indicator in any species which is really easy to see in such a <laughs> large headed species like the alligator snapping turtle is right here where the head muscles would be this is like completely deflated this animal's head should be out to here and it's not you can you can see just how skinny Let's put all that on pause for a minute though. How did we get Chief Brody? How did he come to be a resident here at Garden State Tortoise? Well, like a lot of animals, he is a rescue and a very recent one at that. Like Chum, the alligator snapping turtle that we used to have here, this turtle was found states out of range. This turtle, likely taken out of the wild, is suffering from something. Chances are it could just be natural senescing because this animal is in fact elderly, but these turtles are supposed to live a very long time, over 100 years. And that's why we took him in to our vet. Just a few days after we brought Chief Brody home, we scheduled an in-house call with our veterinarian, Dr. Lambert. He came out and took blood work on the turtle and also performed an initial analysis. This is when we got him started on medicines for a possible parasitic infection. But not too long after that was when we decided he needed to actually go in for imaging so we could see what was happening internally. While at the vet, we wanted to get an accurate weight on Chief Brody because when you can see what the animal is actually weighing, that gives you a better idea of where you stand as far as where you need to get him to be. So he weighed in at 53 pounds, which is not as light as we thought he was going to be, but he does need to get to between 60 and 65 pounds to be at a healthy weight for an alligator snapping turtle of his size and age. Then it was time for the x-rays. This was a lot of fun because number one, none of us were sure if the machine was gonna be able to penetrate such a thick shell on an animal like an alligator snapping turtle, but it was. And it's really amazing to see this because you're used to seeing this on animals like cats and dogs, but to look inside a turtle like this, you're getting to see that skeletal structure and you're also getting to see firsthand that the shell is in fact part of that structure. The alligator snapping turtle is one of the largest freshwater turtles in the world. Males, typically larger than females, can push 100 pounds or more. And a big female, as I've heard, is usually about 65, 70 pounds. But these animals are known to just lie at the bottom of the water and wiggle that appendage at the end of their tongue that looks like a worm to lure in unsuspecting fish. They're thought to be just lazy swamp monsters, but that's not the case at all. Sure, they do that, but they are also hunters. They will actively seek out the right food items that they want to eat in the form of mollusks, crustaceans, fish, and even other turtles. They have a pretty wide range, but they're primarily found in the southeastern United States all the way over to Texas. So, fun fact about alligator snapping turtles is that there isn't just one type, and it's believed that Chief Brody could be the Apalachicola alligator snapping turtle. Here to tell us a little bit more about that type is Greg Brashear from Greg's Turtle Haven. All right, hi Chris, hi Casey. Uh, you're right, there are more than basically one species of alligator snapping turtles. Back in 2014, uh, a paper came out by Travis Thomas and Kevin Inge, and it basically divided alligator snapping turtles up into three species based on three major river drainages. Uh, and that was the uh, completely new Suwannee alligator snapping turtle. Um, and then there was also the Apalachicola alligator snapping turtle, and then the rest further west than that, uh, remain Taminkii, the western 
alligator snapping turtles. And there's been some conjecture over the years about what's valid, what's not valid. At any rate, today we're gonna to talk about the Apalachicola alligator snapping turtles. That's what your new guy is. And he is an amazing looking alligator snapping turtle. And this is Tony. And Tony is also an Apalachicola snapping turtle, just like the one that you have. And what makes these guys so unique is that in the river drainage that they're in, there's just so many mussels, there's so many clams, there's so many mollusks. These guys have basically become specialized over the millions of years that they've inhabited that drainage. And what they've done is they've basically incorporated those mollusks into being up to like 90% of their diet. In these turtles, you can see it. Uh, their head is a little bit different than the other alligator snapping turtles. The eyes are more forward on the end of the head. Um, and what that does is that allows the back of the head to expand more to allow for larger musculature to smash those clams and grind them up. Also gives them just kind of a unique appearance, uh, very bulldog-like. And they also will develop these large plates inside their mouth, much like your diamondback terrapins. Uh, they use these plates inside the mouth to kind of fit together and crush up those shells. So on your alligator snapping turtle, when he opens his mouth, you can kind of see those in the lower and upper jaws and they need to be able to wear those down. So uh, it is important that they get that natural diet of clams, mussels, uh, crayfish, you know, crustaceans, lots of hard stuff. These turtles need hard stuff. This can be done in captivity and they really appreciate it. Uh, this guy here, Bullet Tooth Tony, is a big fan of the clams that I'm able to feed him. And he does really well on that diet, has really good weight and has been a real success story. So congratulations on your new snapping turtle. And I think you guys are gonna do great. Peace. So thanks for that, Greg. You guys should definitely check out his channel. It is Greg's Turtle Haven. He does so much work with turtles, primarily the alligator snapping turtle, both in the wild and in captivity. A true resource on the species. So knowing an animal's true subspecies and even its geographical origin can tell you a lot about how the animal should be living. Diet is one of those main things. This animal is not sitting there waiting for a gazelle to approach the water, okay? He is actively hunting for things like mollusks and crustaceans. So it's our job now to feed him heavily the right food items so that he could put on that healthy weight and of course not start suffering from additional health problems by being fed an improper diet of things like rats and chicken, which is so common in a lot of zoos and other facilities. So this was a good day. So far we've got some good news. We got his blood work back and it is really showing that it's pretty good. The only thing we're noticing is that his calcium levels may be just a little bit low. Now with something like that though, you got to remember this is not your everyday pet. And in fact, it's hard to compare this species to more common species seen as pets when it comes to turtles and tortoises like a redfoot tortoise for example. The panels coming back from other species are not going to totally match up with what he's supposed to look like as far as blood goes. but. Generally speaking, blood's looking good. We also can see that he does not have a blockage. He's just got some clamshell in there, which is normal, and he should be passing a good fecal soon, which we can further analyze for parasites, because right now, it's looking like an internal parasite may really be the cause as to why this turtle has lost so much weight, but has such enthusiasm in wanting to eat constantly. Of course, he could just be naturally senescing because he's old, but we're hopeful that this turtle is going to be around for a while and we've just got a great team helping us look after him right now. So I wanted to show you guys something else really special to us. This is Hooper. Hooper is a baby alligator snapping turtle that was produced by our male Chum, who used to live here. Unfortunately, Chum passed away in the summer of 2022 from unknown causes, but it is believed that it was due to long-term kidney failure from his very horrific past. Well, we now have Hooper to carry on his legacy. And what's really cool is that I can show you how Chief Brody probably started off. This is how alligator snapping turtles look when they're very, very young, only a couple months to a year of age, and what they turn into as they become these massive, powerful, prehistoric looking adults. And you don't get to see that too often. So, Chief Brody, we're still waiting to find out exactly what's going on with him, but regardless of what it is, we're gonna make sure that he lives a full, comfortable life here, no matter how much time he may have left. So we stopped home real quick to drop Chief Brody off so he can get comfortable now and de-stress from the vet trip. But we're not done today. 
Right now, we're heading to one of our favorite nature centers that needs help with the last two animals that they have in their care, and they happen to be a pair of Eastern box turtles that they would like us to take in at Garden State Tortoise. We're gonna find out their story and how they've been doing for the past nine years. So this is a nice little display of the native turtles that can be found in the state of New Jersey. And just like one of the shells you saw up there, and like Otis the Eastern Box Turtle, the two turtles that we're taking home today are Fred and Ethel. They're an adult pair of Eastern Box Turtles. And the main issue here is that this nature center is going under major construction and all the animal programs are kaput. They've been cut, they're over, it's done. So these animals have nowhere to go. They cannot be released back to the wild, of course, for various reasons. So this nature center reached out to us and uh, we're gonna get the turtles wrapped up and out of here and get them comfortable and I'll tell you the rest later. Fred and Ethel. Ethel's the female, Fred is the male. Kind of similar to Otis in markings. Now, what's kind of cool about these two is when Casey and I got married, we had our after party at a place called Fred and Ethel, so it's kind of cool that they're named that. Um, it's really sad that they are getting rid of the uh, animal programs here, the nature programs, because it's so important for kids to learn about wildlife, like declining species like eastern box turtles and really any other type of turtle at this point. Let's get these guys home. Yes. This is Freffle. <laughs> this is Ethel and Fred. So that's right. This is Fred and Ethel, the new pair of Eastern Box Turtles that are going to live at Garden State Tortoise. They're going to get to live a much more naturalistic lifestyle. And you know, it's a happy ending for these turtles, uh, but it really is a shame that the animal programs over at that nature center are going to be gone. But we did offer our services, so maybe we'll be going back there with Fred and Ethel to continue to teach audiences, including children, about the importance of these animals in the ecosystem.